Now, at this point in this chapter, we have described a bunch of elements that I want you to have clear. So we have described first with uh, we have spoken a little bit of receptors. We said that we have somatic and visceral receptors. The somatics are located on the skin and on the skeletal muscles and they can detect uh, touch, pressure, vibration, uh, temperature, pain. Uh, we have also proprioceptors that let the CNS, the central nervous system, know about our body position and the body movements at any given moment. So it can be aware, you know, of uh, or if it needs to be adjustments to keep uh, our body or our equilibrium. And we have the visceral located inside in the visceral organs. We described also the peripheral nervous system, which is the nervous tissue located outside the central nervous system. We described the sensory branch or the sensory division, which is the afferent, also called the afferent division, that brings information from these receptors uh, to the central nervous system, right? And the motor branch or the uh, afferent division of the uh, peripheral nervous system brings the motor command, what you have thought, what we're going to do. Okay, that answer is going to be brought from the CNS again, brain and the spinal cord, to the effector, to a muscle usually. Um, we describe the effectors, and they remember they can be either somatic or visceral. Again, if uh, these receptors, I, I mean effectors or target organs are uh, skeletal muscles, they are somatic. If they are cardiac or smooth muscle, they are visceral. We described in the central nervous system, which is the, uh, the brain and the spinal cord, we're describing they're just interneurons and motor neurons. The sensory neurons are located only on the peripheral nervous system and in some receptors. And on the central nervous system, we have only interneurons and motor neurons. And what else do we say? And we described, we have described the synapses. One more time, we describe them on uh, muscles, in the chapter of muscles, uh, uh, when we were dealing with uh, uh, neuromuscular junction, we used the same example in this uh, chapter to explain synapses. And remember, it's just the site of communication between two neurons or between one neuron and its effector, okay? Now, what I want to do in this video is to integrate all of these concepts into one function, okay? And for that, the best examples are reflex arcs. And in a reflex arc, look what we have. The five components that you have listed in here are the same things that we have described through this chapter. So on a reflex arc, well, let's start defining what is that. A reflex arc is an automatic response is how your body reacts automatically. Uh, sometimes within our uh, conscious involvement, we're not even aware that we're going to react like that. And it's automatic. Some of them are innate. We were born with that. And some of them cannot be modified. Some of them can depending on the nature, because there's extensive classification of reflex arcs. But in here, we're going to refer to reflex arcs in general. And in general, they have these five components. First, we need a receptor. Remember, it can be somatic or visceral to detect or to sense the stimulus. And the stimulus can be painful, like in this example, a, a, a nail on the skin. Uh, but it can be stretching, it can be taste, it can be any type of stimulus. Uh, that receptor is connected uh, to a sensory neuron, uh, part of the peripheral nervous system, and the function of this neuron, uh, this is uh, the comp second component, is to bring that information from the receptor 
to here. This is a cross section of the spinal cord. So this is central nervous system. So it brings the information in here. Remember, these are the tattletellers. And um, the third component is the integration center, which is the central nervous system. In here, we're going to have either interneurons, they're going to complicate a little bit the picture, or we're going to have motor neurons, uh, that which uh, is the first element in the reflex arc, and it's the one that is going to send out the motor command, the order for contraction from the central nervous system to the effector. And remember, in this, uh, specifically in this uh, reflex arc or in this example, the effector is a, a somatic effector, it's a skeletal muscle, but it can be a visceral effector, but we need a visceral sensation. Got it? Now, the reflex arc can be monosynaptic uh, or polysynaptic. In a monosynaptic, and mono means one. Ooh, uh, let me grab my super duper pen. Okay, mono in here means one. So we have one synapse. So one synapse between the two neurons. We have the component in a monosynaptic reflex, which is the simplest of the reflex arcs in the human body, uh, consists of two neurons, a sensory neuron and a motor neuron. Only two neurons, of course, just one synapse, one site of communication between the two neurons. Now, uh, what are the components in here? Uh, this example is the, um, the patellar ligament, uh, the patellar reflex arc which is consists of first let's put the receptor in here which is number one the receptor is it's called the muscle spindle it's in a structure that we'll describe later located right here in this skeletal muscle which happens to be the quadriceps muscle now you're familiar with this this is the quadriceps muscle this is the quadriceps tendon Okay, within the quadriceps tendon, we're going to find the patella, and from the apex of the patella to the tibial tuberosity, which is down here, um, we're going to find the uh, patellar ligament. Now, we are going to, with this reflex hammer, we're going to tap at the patellar ligament, and that's going to push the patellar ligament against the tibial tuberosity. And that pushing effect is going to stretch the muscle, the quadriceps muscle, okay? And that's the signal uh, that is detected by the receptor, the stretching of this muscle spindle. It's detected by this receptor, the sensory uh, receptor in the quadriceps muscle. It's a somatic, right? A somatic receptor. Uh, the somatic... The, um, the sensory neuron from here, which is the step number two, delivers the information from this receptor, which is this neuron connected to, to the central nervous system, which does, uh, to the spinal cord in this segment. In which segment is this is about L2, L3, okay? Lumbar uh, uh, segment of the spinal cord, the second or the third. Now, this is a very simple reflex arc. Right there, the uh, sensory neuron synapses with a motor neuron. That's it. And the motor neuron, which is, uh, well, in here, I skipped one. Here in the central nervous system, the information is processed. The arriving sensory information is processed in any uh, response, a motor response is created. And in here, which is our step number four, the motor neuron or afferent neuron sends out the motor command or the motor, the order to contraction to a skeletal muscle. And then this is again the quadriceps and the, mus the order for contraction uh, is delivered. The muscle, the quadriceps muscle contracts. What is the action of the quadriceps muscle? To uh, extend the leg. So now we extend the leg. And that's, this is your effector, which is number five, and 
and in here you have your effect, your answer, your the the, the product of all of these uh, uh, events. That's the monosynaptic. This is the simplest of the reflex arcs in our body, but sadly, we have few of them. Most of our uh, the human uh, reflex arcs are polysynaptic, and polysynaptic means poly means more than one okay and more than one because in here we are not gonna have two neurons but we're gonna have more than two neurons uh two three four or five neurons so we're gonna have if we have one neuron and another neuron and a third neuron we're gonna have here one synapse in here and a second synapse in here so we're gonna have at least uh, three neurons and at least two synapses. Now, examples of this uh, uh, polysynaptic R reflex. Look at this. The, this hand, this skin is receiving a painful stimulus. You just place the hand over attack. So that is detected by the receptor and sent to, again, to the spinal cord part of the central nervous system, this is CNS, uh, using what? The second element, which is the sensory neuron. See again, the sensory neuron is located outside the CNS in a ganglia. Remember, it's a group of cell bodies, uh, neuronal cell bodies outside the CNS, in the PNS. Um, and this sensory neuron is connected to the receptor in the periphery and brings the information to the CNS. But look at in here, we have another, here in the um, integration center, we have another neuron. This is a second neuron, and this is an interneuron. And this is what complicates the entire picture in here. This interneuron will synapse, okay, uh, directly, just so we can uh, perform the reflexive uh, action it will synapse uh, automatically and immediately with a modern neuron, which is the third neuron in here, and the modern neuron will deliver the um, order to, for contraction to the effector, to this skeletal muscle, so it can move away the limb or the arm, the hand, from the painful stimulus, okay? But at the same time, look at this interneuron has another branch and look how everything complicates now. In here is not attack, but it's a flame uh, hand. This hand is being burned. Now, <clears throat> we read for fun. So this is your stimulus. The receptors, the thermal receptors are located here on the skin and they're connected to the sensory neuron. Then the sensory neuron brings the information. We know this, step number two right to the central nervous system here we have mr or mrs interneuron um synapsing with a motor neuron right and uh, to deliver the um, the motor command to a skeletal muscle to finish the arc reflex this is only the reflex arc okay uh, all of these elements what i'm going to explain now is connected to this arc reflex, but it doesn't form part of the arc reflex. Um, let's see if we can understand this. The flame was burning this hand. The information get to the spinal cord. The spinal cord said, hmm, integration. Let me move the hand away. And uh, it sent another uh, a motor neuron to send a message to the muscles so they contract and move the hand away from the fire. We have so far these everything, this response happened at the level of the spinal cord. We have no clue of what's going on, right? Because we, this information haven't reached the brain, so we are not aware of that, okay? So this is what the interneuron is going to do. It sends a branch, it crosses and synapses with a lot of other interneurons. And the thing is that crosses to the other side, ascends to one structure here called the thalamus, 
here, the thalamus, which is we will describe in, in the next chapter, but is uh, look at that as a router. It's the one that decides where to send the signal, uh, to what part of the brain we're going to send the signal. So the thalamus decides and it also acts as a filter, you know, it just sends to the brain, to the our conscious level, just relevant information. So that's why we, we just we can tune down certain stimulus and just focus in another one. Hopefully you are now your thalamus is telling you to pay attention to this video uh, and not to the TV that might be on at the same time. So what does this interneuron do? This interneuron sent the information to the thalamus from the thalamus to several sensory uh, areas, not just one, but several, the visual, the auditory, the tactile, uh, several sensory areas. And it's going to, the processing that is going to occur here in higher levels in your brain cortex is way more complicated because now based on your memories, based on previous experiences that you have had before uh, to uh, uh, the same stimulus, you can create another response. But this is, again, this is not a reflexive response. This is not part of the reflex arc. But now, because of that, you can now send, an, again, uh, through several interneurons, a motor command through another motor neuron to now go and look for fresh water to put your, your burning hand into uh, because that will calm, uh, will stop the burning process and will calm your pain. So this response, this secondary response is voluntary or cure because it reached the uh, conscious uh, level. We can't decide it, we can modify it. Uh, the other one we can't. Now, I hope we were simple machines, we were kind of complicated living creatures. And this, this is very similar to the stimulus, uh, I'm sorry, to the polysynaptic reflexes I have described so far to, for you. But in this one, I like this example better. It's the same, by the way, this reflex arc is called withdrawal reflex which is a, a reflex where you withdraw a limb, your upper or your lower limb, from a painful stimulus. Uh, but it's a very complicated reflex, and the best example uh, to illustrate this is at the level of the lower limbs, actually. Uh, this guy is stepping into attack. So, as we explained before, he's going to flex um, this what is that, the right uh, leg, right, the right, uh, yes, leg, in order to move away the leg from the painful stimulus. So the here is the stimulus, the nociceptor is a receptor that detects pain, uh, is connected to the sensory neuron, and the sensory neuron, let me grab my pen again, and the sensory uh, neuron brings the information to the central nervous system. Look how complicated all of this is. So it's not like, two or three neurons. There's a lot of neurons in here. Um, some of these neurons will, the one that I described before, is going to stimulate a motor neuron that is going to stimulate the contraction of the muscles or going to flex the leg. So far, well, you flex the leg, okay, you, you uh, um, stimulated your hamstrings, which are the muscles that flex at the leg, at the knee, so you can move away your foot from the tack, right? It will be done to, if we didn't have the reflex, we still have the, the foot on the tack. Um, at the same time, this neuron has to send a, another uh, instruction or another command, but this is to inhibit, to stop a neuron to, from stimulating the quadricep muscles or the muscles are opposing the flexor movement or the flexing movement. At the same time, at the same time, this sensory neuron sends information, remember, to another interneuron to a higher, uh, to a higher 
uh, levels to your brain to make these uh, stimulus conscious. Or so the brain can be aware of what happened. And at the same time, it sends information to the contralateral limb, to the other limb, because hopefully if you're stepping on attack and you flex this, the right leg, you better pray that the other leg is extended. Uh, so, so you don't have to relay in prayers. We have our nervous system, which makes sure that at the same time you're flexing the right leg, you are extending. It sends information to the other leg to, or the upper limb to extend it. So we don't fall. Um, so this is the withdrawal reflex. So it sends flexing or activate flex flexion to move away one limb, the one that is being injured, but at the same time, it sends information to the other limb to contract the extensor muscle so we don't fall. But it's not just that, it's always sending information to your upper limbs. So to keep the, the, you know, the center of gravity um, uh, where it should be, because now you're standing in one foot, now you extend the arm that you're flex, uh, the arm on the same side of the stimulus, of the painful stimulus, and you flex the other one. Pay attention to the, first, the next time you, you step in something uh, that can harm you or can uh, have any painful stimulus and you will see. You lift automatically, you lift the arm, the other, I'm sorry, you lift the leg, the other leg contracts and you uh, flex the arm opposite to the side of the stimulus and extend the other one. Um, I was going to tell you something else, but I forgot. Well, all of this um, explains, or, or, or this illustration is beautiful to explain the withdrawal reflex. Uh, for our class, this is just, I explain it for fun. For our class, you just need to know the basics of any, every uh, reflex arc, the monosynaptic and the polysynaptic, and that's it. I'm not going to ask you the details of the withdrawal uh, reflex. I take it for fun again, and uh, this is part of the physiology class, honestly. Um, and I'm still trying to remember what I wanted to tell you, but if I remember, I'll let you know. See you!